What's up, YouTube? Poke Primer here. Primer made to deliver you our team builder for week nine of the PTL here on the channel. This is the final week of the regular season, and uh, this week we are taking on Justin and his gray team, which is going to be a really, really interesting matchup to say the least. Um, and before I get into the actual team builder for this week, I do want to specify because you have already seen week eight at this point, but you have not seen week seven. And why is that, guys? Why is that? Well, the reason you have not seen week seven is because week seven did not happen. Um, Tom, uh, the coach of the purple team, uh, who was our week seven opponent, he decided he was not he did not have the time and availability to devote to his games. Uh, he was a few he was a couple weeks behind, and uh, so. He didn't have the time to devote to his games, so or to even have his games at all, and uh, so he decided to just kind of go ahead and forfeit the rest of his matches for the season. So we did get a 3-0 victory for that week. Um, so as of this moment, we are currently sitting at 6-2. and two. Uh, So very, very firmly in spot for playoffs. Very, very firmly in the playoffs for sure. Um... And uh, this is just our final week, so uh, you know you're gonna see it. you're gonna see obviously a lot of standard things, you know, trying to pick up the wins. But we're, you're gonna see you're gonna see a little bit of like yoloing it near the end here because um, it's it's week um, it's the end of the it's the end of the season. It's it's de it's the end of the season, dude. That's all I'm gonna say. It is the end of the damn season. We're about to have some fun. We made playoffs. We're having fun. That's what we're here to do. Have fun. But um now into the actual team builder. Uh Justin's team is terrifying uh offensively, but he has not had that great of a record this season. He's actually sitting like pretty down low. Um His record's not entirely updated on the document, but he he's overall he hasn't been doing fantastic. But um his team consists of Kiram Black, Terrakion, Scizor, uh Zelf, Heliolisk, Rose Raid, Umbreon, Staraptor, Top of Finny, Rhyperior, Blacephalon, and Sylveon. His uh, potential Mega is... He only has one potential Mega in the form of Scizor. And his two potential Z-Crystal users are Kiram Black and Blacephalon. So, very... <clears throat> excuse me. Very, very scary. Scary offensive Mons, along with some not so... Along with some very solid defensive backbone. A lot of speed to deal with. It's going to be a very, very speed-heavy matchup. I'm not really looking forward to that. This is going to be a tough match. It's going to be a very, very tough match. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to pick up the W. But at the same time, again, we're trying to have fun this week. So uh, you'll see how I'm trying to have fun later on. But um, hopping into the team builder itself. The first mod that we're going to be bringing is Flytrap House, our Mega Maw Wild. Uh, four attacks, just straight up four attacks. Iron Head, Play Rough, Sucker Punch, Fire Fang, 252 into HP, 132 in defense, and 124 in speed uh, with an Adamant Nature. The Adamant Nature is literally just to give us that little extra oomph with our huge power so that we can do some extra damage. Um, the defensive investment was literally just the leftovers. Uh, obviously, HP is maxed out so we can have the extra bulk. Uh, the defense investment is just for leftovers. We're going to have Intimidate prior to Mega Evolving, so we will uh, be coming in with that decent defense investment as well as being able to lower something to minus one, pretty much putting him in a very negative situation. Uh, the 124 into speed, I believe that is to outpace a Umbreon because uh, Min Speed Umbreon hits 166, uh, is a base 65 Mon. And for those of you who don't know, um, the basic way of knowing um, uh, every 40 EVs at level 100 will take you up to the next uh, five base stat points. So like we're sitting at base 50, he sits at base uh, 65. So 120 EVs brings us up to like speed tying, and then that extra four is going to take us over the edge. So that's that's kind of like a, a fun little thing I noticed over time of like team building and stuff. And like so, you can see um, 
this whole situation here, which is pretty cool. But uh, I'm pretty happy with this set. Uh, Iron Head will break through the Sylveon, as well as being able to 2 KO the Rhyperior, and um, just overall, like anything that doesn't resist this is going to basically get fucked. Um, Player Off will absolutely obliterate the Umbreon as well as again anything that doesn't resist it and like if it does resist it even still it's going to still obliterate it uh, we have Sucker Punch Sucker Punch is very important uh, in this matchup I think because there's a lot of things that are faster than this obviously uh, that could be very threatening uh, Blacephalon if it gets a kill and gets a beast boost and gets going this is our immediate go to uh, to Sucker Punch that thing and knock it the fuck out get it out of there ASAP uh, as well as something like the Azelf uh, early game, we could potentially um, lead with this thing and stop stop the Azelf from doing anything at all, which is very important. Um, or being able to just pick off something uh, later in the game that's just on a roll, and I don't want it to be on a roll anymore with a Sucker Punch. Because Sucker Punch, even though it got the damage nerf in this generation, still does a lot of damage coming off of this ridiculous attack stat that this thing boasts. Uh, and then we have the Fire Fang literally... Just because he has Mega Scizor. That's it. Um, if he's a regular Scizor, like, we outspeed it, which is cool. If he's, uh, and obviously, if he brings Mega, um, we won't outspeed, but we'll still be able to take basically any hit from it and knock it out immediately, which is extremely important. So... Now I think this I think this set can put in a lot of work this week, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how it does. The next one we're bringing is our is is the God Tiermon, uh, Ron Weevily the Weavile, uh, one of our favorite mons to use in draft format at this point in time. Uh, knock off Pursuit, Ice Cold Crash, and Focus Punch with the Phytanium Z. Uh, enough speed to outpace uh, Azelf. Um, Max attack and then throwing the rest into the HP. Um, this thing is uh, going to do its very best to break through uh, his team. Um, knock off on potential switch-ins is going to be very important to uh, scout for uh, Z-moves. I'm going to have to be very... Um, I don't have to be as careful when it comes to knock off um, now that I think about it. Because even if he scarfed Tarak... I can just immediately fight Tinium Z him afterwards, which is really nice. Uh, so if he does get a justified boost off of me, he dies because I'm not taking any chances with that. Like, like knockoff. Like, uh, I was I was originally fearing Terrakion because of this with this mod. Like, it's going to be knockoff spam. Um, but now I'm not as terrified because if Terrakion does come in on a knockoff from this thing, uh, it's going to lose a potential choice scarf, and then I can literally just click the Phytanium and knock it out which is really, really cool. Uh, Phytinia will also be very good for getting rid of the Curum. Like, realistically, like, Phytinium is here specifically to beat certain things, but there's also things that I'd much rather beat um, versus others. Like, Phytinium is something... Like, I probably will try to avoid using Phytinium on Curum Black. I'll... The two things mainly I would like to use my Phytanium Z on, not even the Rhyperior, um, because Rhyperior can still take that very well. Um, the two things I would want to use my Phytanium on are Terrakion and um, Umbreon, because either one is going to not appreciate the hit. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. So I think uh, that will be very helpful. Icicle Crash. We'll just do a decent amount to a lot of things, really tear through things like the Rose Raid and the Staraptor, uh, which is very important. Uh, I could not fit Poison Jab on this set. I kind of wanted to for the Tapu Fini. I almost ran Poisonium, 
for Tapu Fini, but I was like, I could probably beat it with other things. I'm not super worried. Realistically, like, Tapu Fini is, like, going to be a big bulky problem, but I think I can still beat it. Like, I'm not super worried. Getting rid of his leftovers with knockoff will be very important uh, earlier in the game, and uh, they can beat it down late game um, as well. I'm not too worried. Um, pursuit, I can, like, potentially Pursuit Trap the Azelf. Um, this is more than likely going to be my lead, potentially, if he brings the Azelf. So I can go in against the Azelf and literally just click Pursuit immediately. Because even if he decides to set up rocks, turn one, like, to... Like, if he uses Sash Azelf to try to set up rocks, Pursuit, I'm pretty sure, two it KOs. And, like, I can just click Pursuit anyway for free against it, which is nice. Um, so that's, that's the potential of that. Um, then we have, uh, yeah, that's, that's the set. Then we're gonna, we're gonna have Ripster here, Ripster the Garchomp. Um, Choice Scarfed, uh, need to change that to Rough Skin so I don't forget. Uh, Dragon Claw, Earthquake, Poison Jab, and Fire Blast. Earthquake is super spammable, uh, in this game. Um, only two immunities to Earthquake, being Staraptor. And uh, Azelf. Azelf is more than likely going to be gone early game if it's if it's even brought, which is important to note. Um, and the Staraptor, uh, if it doesn't come, which I don't think it will come because of the potential for me to have Mega Agron on this squad, as well as the potential as it, of it being like free uh, Zerk Sweep Fodder. Um, I don't think he will bring it. Personally, that's just me. I could be wrong, but I just don't see that being very advantageous for him. But that's, again, just that's my thought process. Um, so realistically, Earthquake's going to be spammable. Uh, nothing really wants to switch into an Earthquake. Um, we have the Dragon Claw because we can use that to break through the Kirin Black um, and just have a nice stab move to hit certain things with. We have the Earthquake, which things like Sylveon, uh, Tapu Fini don't appreciate coming in on. Uh, Poison Jab is there to really dish out the damage to those two, uh, which is nice um, because Poison Jab technically does do more damage to them. Um, Earthquake due to the stab boost bumps up to uh, 150 base power. Poison Jab, uh, due to being super effective, will be 160. So that's important to note. And then we have the Fire Blast, because I could see, uh, like, Scizor being a switch into this thing, like, later in the game. Uh, if, like, Finny slash Sylveon is gone. Because I don't see both Finny and Sylveon coming. If both do come, then kudos to him. That's actually really smart prep, because I'm not prepared for that. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, that, like, a double fairy thing would just fuck me. Um, considering I have double steel crazy right uh maybe that's just because my poison type is not the best but we'll see what happens you know, you'll see what happens actually you'll see what happens um but no this is uh this is a pretty cool set it's a pretty cool set i think it'd be a pretty standard set actually um so um i actually have to reply to this real quick but we're gonna we're gonna go on to super slap here uh our sib berry holding uh yuxi uh who can potentially um, save our lives earlier in the game. Um, so we have Stealth Rock, Knockoff, Psychic, and U-Turn. Uh, U-Turn is, uh, just for momentum purposes, obviously. Uh, Psychic is here to, um for stab just to hit things with the stab move potentially like the terrakion because we can actually switch into that thing pretty well being physically defensive we have the kasib berry and now the kasib berry is this is kind of a bait kind of situation because you know maybe he'll go into blacephalon on the turn i go for rocks right like this is this is how i envision this series going he goes blacephalon on the turn that i set up my rocks right Scarf for Specs doesn't matter. Goes for the Shadow Ball on my Uxie to try to kill it. And... Um...
and then I can go for the knockoff on him and do a shit ton of damage. And actually, realistically, why am I running bold and not relaxed so I can get the extra damage on knockoff? That's a great question. Why am I not? Is there anything that I outspeed that if I go this way, I don't? Vinny? Vinny sits at 2.06? Yeah, Vinny sits at 2.06. Which realistically, I could just like take 1, 2, 1, 2. Now we outspeed Finny again. So, we just re-optimized the set to be just as effective as it was before, while still being, um, while still outspeeding the things I need to outspeed. Um, so, yeah, uh, this set can be a good, uh, Blacephalon lore to catch it off guard, knock it off, and potentially get rid of it, which is nice. Um, that's about it. Basically, just here because I didn't want to bring regular Agron. I didn't want to bring rocks on Flytrap House, and I was bringing the Scarfed fully offensive uh, Garchomp. So all of my other rockers were kind of busy, so I needed something that had those on the team. So here's Yuxi. So, yeah. Next, we're bringing RK9. He hasn't come a lot this season, so we're going to bring him along. Uh, RK9, the Arcanine, obviously. Uh, Rocky Helmet Arcanine this week um, with Will-O-Wisp, Morning Sun, Flare Blitz, and Wild Charge. Uh, Will Wisp, obviously, to burn potential switch ins, uh, which is important. Um, Morning Sun, to keep this thing healthy. Uh, Flare Blitz, to nuke uh, things like the Heliolisk and the Roserade, um, and just anything that doesn't resist it. And the Wild Charge, to uh, potentially catch like a Tapu Fini or something on a switch in. The main reason I'm bringing this is because there's a Mega Scizor. This thing basically walls it. Um, Another thing, like I'm, I'm not as worried about Tapu Fini is because um, he might not think I would bring this because I've only brought it like once. He might think that I'm like either not adept at using this mon or that I'm just scared to bring it sometimes, and that might come into my advantage because I have not brought it a lot. So. Um, the Rocky Helmet Intimidate thing can be really nice, and just this mixed defensive spread actually provides me a lot of necessary bulk against certain mons, uh, avoiding being KO'd by certain mons in certain situations. It's actually really, really good, good for this matchup overall, and I'm really excited to use Arcanine this week. The last mon, I told y'all guys I'd bring in at least once, and I am. I told, I told, I told you, like, very beginning I was bringing this thing once. We have Monsieur Noodle. The Swalot. So, okay. A little, little fun story. Not, not not particularly a fun story. I'm not too pleased with the situation. It's my own fault. I should have looked into it better. But, uh, fun situation time. Um, so, I was actually going to drop this Pokemon. I was going to drop Swalot. I was fully prepared to do so. I was going to drop it. And I asked about it because week six was the thing that cut off point. And, like... My week six match was a little bit late, but, like, I was hoping that maybe they'd still let me... My, my week six match was going to be late, but I was hoping that, like, they were going to just extend the cutoff, at least potentially, until the end of... Um... I was hoping they would extend the deadline potentially to, um, you know, adjust for that, I guess. But they decided not to, which I understand entirely. Like, the deadline's been set since week one. Like, hey, don't be fucking stupid and wait till the last minute and then ask, like, be like, oh, hey, can I fucking drop this mon, like, the last potential week I can? Uh, I was actually looking into potentially dropping it for, um... There was a couple other options, like, uh, looking at the purple tier as it stands right now. 
Um, I thought about Haunter. I thought about Weezing. Weezing was one of my top options at the time. Uh, much better poison type. Um, I had looked at regular Sableye as an option, which is a very, very good. Regular Hoopa, which was chilling there. Um, Drapion, which was honestly probably going to be the one that I went with because, you know, Drapion's great and a single weakness is a single weakness. But unfortunately, we were unable to do so. So instead, we end up with this situation here where we have this matchup where I just get to bring Swalot and have fun. And we're bringing an Assault Vested Sticky Hold Swalot, so we're not losing this Assault Vest. We are holding on to this bitch all game long. Uh, no knockoffs coming our way. Um, realistically, like looking at his team, like the only things he has that can potentially have knockoff, and actually now that I think about it, the only things that potentially could have knockoff are Scizor, uh, Azelf, which is probably going to be dead before this thing comes on the field, um, Blacephalon, which is not going to be running it, and Tapu Fini, which is not going to be running it if it's brought. So realistically, just Scizor, and uh, Scizor won't last long against this thing. So I think I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to go with Liquid Ooze, just in case I can use this thing as a switch into to uh, Rose Raid, if, it goes for, if it's going for like a Grass Titan move of any kind, um, which could be kind of cool. Um, but we have Power Up Punch, Gunk Shot, Fire Punch, and Seed Bomb with an Adamant Nature, Max Attack, we have enough speed to outpace the Umbreon. Um, and then I just threw the rest into HP, leaving us an odd number, and then the last four into Spadef for that Assault Vestingness. Um, Power Up Punch is there to go for, like, on switch-ins, um, because actually, yeah, he has a lot of fighting weaknesses, like Kieran Black, Terrakion, Heliolisk, Umbreon, Rhyperior, like, a lot of things that, like, I can hit with a Power Up Punch, like, it's not gonna do a lot of damage, because it's a Swalot, but, like, It'll give me that plus one, which is nice. Um, and then, if I can get up to, like, plus one or plus two, like, this thing could put in a lot more work. Uh, Gunshot will uh, allow us to break through things like the top of Finny um, and the Sylveon, which is cool. And just having a nice, powerful stab move backed by, like, a plus one, plus two attack or whatever, like, could be really, really nice. And we have the Fire Punch because this will allow us to tear through that Mega Scizor if it's brought. Uh, it'll try to set up on us and just get hit with a fire punch and be like, oh shit, I'm dead. Fuck. <laughs> That's cool. And then we have Seed Bomb because of the Rhyperior, because it'll hit the Rhyperior super effectively. And if we can get up to plus one, like, potentially Seed Bomb could potentially KO. I don't know. I haven't run any Calyxus Wallet, because I'm literally just bringing this for the lulls. It is for the lulls. If it dies immediately, it dies immediately. But we brought fucking Swallet to a game, and that's all that matters. But with that, though, we're going to end off this uh, this team builder. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, I'm Poke Primer, signing off. Peace!